So the next thing is relation between Purusha and Prakriti. And this is field and the knower of the field expressed in uh, slightly different words. But let's see what Bhagwan says. Know you that matter, Prakriti, and spirit, Purusha, are both beginningless. Prakriti and Purusha come together, but they are both beginningless without any kind of beginning. And know you also that all modifications and qualities are born of Prakriti. So imagine that these two things have come together, matter and spirit, Prakriti and Purusha. So there are things which are happening in this conjunction. And what Bhagwan is saying here is that every modification which is taking place, in other words, although it is beginningless, there are things happening in this congregate of the Purusha and Prakriti, whereby modifications are going on and there are qualities which are born. So remember, Purusha is without any qualities, but here with this conjunction, we've got qualities and they are born of Prakriti. Modification qualities come out of Prakriti. And in the production of effect and cause, Prakriti is said to be the cause. So this cause-effect relationship, which is there in the transactional world, causality, time, and space belong to Prakriti. So Prakriti is a cause of all this cause-effect, which is taking place. So if I lift my hand, you can see it. If I put it down, you can't see it. Why? Because this is cause-effect relationship. This can happen only in Prakriti. Prakriti is a cause. In the experience of pleasure and pain, Purusha is said to be the cause. Now, how can Purusha be the giving me pleasure and pain? It's not that Purusha is giving me pleasure and pain, but he's allowing the experience of pleasure and pain. In other words, sentiency. Remember, we were talking about sentiency. Sentiency is awareness. And it is awareness of all the things which are going on in my body, mind, intellect. And through my senses, I can perceive the external reality, the transactional reality. Now, where is this awareness coming from? It is coming from Purusha. So this experience which I'm having, the experience itself arises and the awareness of that experience is given to me by Purusha. So Prakriti Purusha coming together We've got both these things going on at the same time. Modifications in body, mind, intellect, plus also the experience of all the modifications which are going on. And that is because Purusha is available in myself as what? As awareness. And that gives me the experience of everything which is going on. So Prakriti, cause, effect, modifications in the mind. Purusha, which is awareness, and gives me the experience of pleasure and pain. So when they come together, what do we have? We have you and me experiencing all these things which are going on in our body, mind, intellect, and also that perceptions are taking place of the world around me, which is also Prakriti. And Bhagwan says earlier on that these are gunas playing in the gunas my gunas of the body, mind, intellect playing in the gunas of the world. And if you think about that, I'm none of these things. I'm none of these modifications. I'm none of this cause effect relationship. I'm not, not space. I'm not time. I'm beyond all these things. But at the moment in this embodied form, I'm experiencing all these modifications, experience of pleasure and pain, etc. Through my discrimination and my sadhana, I'm going to begin to disconjunct them. Discrimination basically is about pulling things apart. And this means I'm going to be able to recognize Purusha and I'm going to be recognized what Prakriti is. So Purusha seated in Prakriti experiences qualities born of Prakriti. So this experience is coming off the modifications of Prakriti which is going on. And what happens? Then I become attached to this quality. And when you become attached to these qualities of, uh, of the gunas, the rajas and the tamas and the sattva, it binds me by me being attached to various different things. So in, chapter, in the next chapter, Bhagwan is going to talk about these qualities in detail. So for example, when I feel lazy, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to know anything, 
then I enjoy that state of ignorance. That's why I say ignorance is bliss, because tamasic guna playing in me creates this attachment to sleep, laziness, etc., procrastination. When it is rajas, it binds through action. When I feel that action, 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 all the time I need to carry out, this is because of the rajasic guna. And the sattvic guna is one of happiness through knowledge. So all of you are listening to this knowledge here, and this makes us to be happy. And this is knowledge, this is the sattvic guna expressing itself, and it binds us through happiness. So all these attachments, when they take place, because we are taking ourselves to be this prakriti, this body-mind intellect, then what happens? We keep on generating more karma, we generate more vasanas, and then we keep on going round and round the circle of sansara. So Supreme Purusha in the body is called the spectator, it's called the permitter, the supporter, the enjoyer, the great Lord and the Supreme Self. Now these are now expressions of Purusha who is sitting in the body right now, in you and me. And we can know Purusha in ourselves as what? As all these things. So he who does knows the Purusha and Prakriti together with the qualities in whatever condition he may be, he's not born again. So this is what we got to know. We know the Purusha and the Prakriti able to separate out and say to myself, I'm not none of this Prakriti stuff. I'm actually the Purusha. Off we go. Self-realization. Not to be ever born again. We go beyond this cycle of birth and death. So you remember this uh, picture, and I've been talking about sentiency control function earlier on, I uh, showed you this picture. So now see what Bhagwan is saying and see the consistency and the coherence of the Bhagavad Gita. So like we are having Brahman here, let's put Purusha here for the time being. And Purusha as Paramatma, Supreme Self as Maheshwara, the great Lord, as Upadrashta, the witness, as Anumanta, the permitter, as Bharta, supporter, as Bhokta, enjoyer. So Purusha is expressing itself in this, in this way in which Bhagwan has just explained to us as Paramatma, Maheshwara, Upadrashta, Anumanta, Bharta and Bhokta. Supreme Self, Great Lord, Witness, Permitter, Supporter, Enjoyer. And this is the Kshetra, this is the Kshetrajna and the Kshetra and expression in the Jiva. So this Jiva, which you and me are experiencing Purusha when we experience ourselves as Supreme Self right up to the Enjoyer. Now, this is where we get increasingly identified with the bhokta and the karta. Remember earlier chapters, that's where we start from. We start off by identifying ourselves as the enjoyer and the doer. And through our karma yoga, the enjoyership and the doership begins to go down. This is the process of purification. See the consistency in the, in the whole philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita and the practice. So as we go down and down and down, even when I'm enjoying this food, what is this enjoyer? This enjoyer is nothing but Purusha express, expressing itself as the bhokta in myself right now when I'm eating this sweet or chocolate and enjoying the chocolate. I have to make this connection between this experience of enjoyment and the Purusha. And when I get into this identification and forget that I'm the Supreme Self, what happens? Human condition of sorrow and suffering. Bhagavad Gita allows us to reverse this whole flow. 